I remembered now what God was going to say about my husband's heart. He said he's your other half. You need to know it. I'm telling you, don't ask God for that. Number one, he may never give it to you if you're not worthy and you're not dead to self because you'll use it to hurt him and God knows it. So you could ask God for something till doomsday and never get it because you're not worthy of it. But when he gave it to me, he said, I trust you. I know there is nothing in you that would ever, ever use what I show you against him. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the Lord showed me, but let me tell you, it was so raw, so truthful, so honest, that it ripped my heart out to know that's how he really thought and felt. It put me in a place of you couldn't imagine because I loved him deeply. And I'm not going to tell you what I found out or what I understood. I'm only going to tell you <laughs> I was very faithful. And God knew it. I know that God, Jesus and me, helped him overcome it all. Now, the heart that he showed me was concerning me. It wasn't about how he thought about this, that, because that is private between him and God. That's, that's not what he wants to give me. That's between him and God, and I respect that. I don't cross over that. I don't cross over and make him me. But the part that affects me, touches me, hurts me, that's the part he gave me. And I don't know, because some of you think, well, I suffered this, and I know that God knows and understands. But you didn't die to self. You have too much of you still inside of you. After I went through things, and I, and, and I told you I was crying, and my eyes bled, and I, I went before God, when I found out they were bleeding and stuff. And I, there was a woman that called me just yesterday and said, I'm tired. I'm tired of going through this. And she, How do you tell a person? If there's more to come, accept it. If you have to go through more, put your head down, set it like a flint and say, I'll never give that devil power over my mind, body, and spirit. I will never give up Jesus Christ in me. I will die before I do that. She doesn't have that resolve. For every one of us get tempted to quit. But when you think about what if Jesus would have quit two minutes before he died and said, I'm just so tired. I can't bear this anymore. I don't know. I can't go through this, Father. I just can't do it. Two minutes. That last two minutes had to have been unbearable. And for you, he didn't say that. For you, he endured to the end and said, It is finished. He defeated the devil. He defeated death. He defeated hell. He defeated every single bit that anybody can go through. Every single bit that the devil threw at him. He defeated it. How? By dying to self. Because whenever he was dying, he was looking at you. Whenever he was dying, he was looking at me. Now just understand, that power of endurance, that power of resurrection, when you let it live inside of you, there's not anything you can't take. There's not anything you can't endure.
without being afraid. You, he says he gives you peace beyond all understanding. He says if you can't control this and you get upset and use your mouth for this and use your mouth, there's a thing called standing up and not letting people make you a mop rag. That when God tells you to speak, you speak. But there's also a thing where you'll try to speak out of the flesh. Don't do it. You hinder your spirit doing what God wants it to do. I know that what, what I went through was simply that I could tell you how God led me out of it, what he taught me. Not for me. I'm already through it. I've already made it. I don't need it. I don't need you to like me, want me, do anything with me. I don't need anything about you. I'm not here for me. I'm here for you. That's the difference between a true child of God teaching the truth and those that do it for money, advantage of being admired, all of those different reasons that people say they are called. Wanting to be a prophet and have the answers they think to everything, so that's what they seek. Wanting to have all the knowledge, so that's what they seek. But where? Where did they seek him because they love him? Where? Where did they seek him because he's the most precious in the whole world and then some? Where? Where did you want to know how he thought about this? How he felt about that? What's his favorite color? What's his favorite anything? Did you search him out to just know him? And I'm not talking about silly little things like that's just an example. But to know him, to walk with him and talk with him. Oh, the way women are told you can't have that relationship without a man. Well, tell that when you get into eternity and you stand before God and God tells you why did you destroy my handmaiden's relationship with my son? Why did you tell them that you're so great as a man and men are so great that they need you as a mediator? Why did you deny Jesus Christ? as a mediator and tell them they can't have God. Why did you deny the blood that says anybody, man, woman, child, can find Jesus Christ through the blood of Jesus Christ? But you denied him. Why? Why would you do such a thing? What did you do when my servant I sent her to tell you? What did you do? Did you laugh her to scorn like others did? Did you mock her and make laugh at her? Because you know that Bible from beginning to end. And God never called a woman. Oh, foolish people. Oh, foolish men. If what you're saying is true, when Eve spoke to God, when God went to Eve and said, what did you do when she ate that fruit? She didn't say, oh, wait, I can't talk to you. i got to go get Adam. I can't, I can't even look at you. I can't see you. I'm nothing. I've got to go find Adam so that Adam can tell, talk to you for me. She didn't do that. She talked directly to God the Father. You know why? She had a relationship with him. He never could have come out and spoke to her and her speak back. I ate. I took the fruit and did eat. The serpent beguiled me. She's talking to God. He's talking back to her. But you say, no woman can. Now, and you know that that relationship with God, that he created man so he could have a, a relationship with someone who is like him. That's why man was created in his image. 
But you women are so stupid that you say, "Oh no, no, there's a there's a feminine part in G- in God. There's a there's a feminine feminine part in Jesus." When God created man, Adam, he took him out of the dust of the ground. And then he breathed the Holy Spirit in his nostrils and made a living soul who walked and talked with him in the garden. And then God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, after saying, Let us make man in our image. God the Father is masculine, God the Son is masculine, and God the Holy Spirit is masculine. The Immaculate Conception could never have happened if God would not be masculine. But you're going to say, well, he was a woman. How dumb can you be? So you have those three things. Look at Adam now. God the Father, God the Son, talk to each other. Many times you'll hear them say, us, let us do this. They actually talk to one another, even though they are one. Like I said, a man is a father, or could be. He has a spirit, just like Jesus did. And he could be a son. Well, in order to exist, he had to be a son. So he could, if he, by choice, get married and have, and have a son himself. So he could be a father, have a spirit, and be... And you can't even see what God did? So what did God do? He said, they looked at him and said, It is not good for Adam to be alone. You know why they said that? Not because they were alone. They're never alone. They've got each other. But they saw man was alone. And man was made as a human being, man. And so God says, well, we'll send him a helpmate. He needs a helpmate. So he took the rib out of Adam and made a woman. Now this is a separate human being. They are not attached. They are separate. This is a human being that walked and talked with God, with Adam now. So much so that she can talk to him in her disobedience. But you're going to say, oh no, that's not true. You're twisting the scriptures. There's only one twisting the scriptures and that's you. And you know all of you foolish followers that believe that Jesus got married? Wake up. Wake up. The Immaculate, when God overshadowed Mary, if he wanted to, he would have used a man or an angel. Because God the Father has come down to earth as an angel. He could have done that. But you see, he would have been the same kind of angel the dark angels are. And the baby would have been a monster just like their babies were. He would never do that. So he overshadowed her. But you say, well, you know, God sent his son to die for the world. And what do you say? Well, his son got married. No, he did not. He was as celibate as he could be. And you trash him because you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I got it all. I'm so smart. Why, God told me this. God told me that. And I know this scripture means this as you twist it and take it out of contents. And this scripture over here, you see, it means that. And you twist it because your knowledge is so great that you can fool people and deceive them with the amount of knowledge that you have. And then you have these foolish women that have walked and talked with Jesus Christ, and you come and say, I'm going to show you in the scriptures where you didn't. 
You had no relationship with God. And I'm going to tell you how Satan is after you through the angels. You better be afraid. The angels are after you. <laughs> as though he wasn't after you as a man. Take a look at homosexuality. How do you think all that happened? He lusted after some of the best looking men on this earth are homosexual. Why? Because what attracted the dark angels was the beauty of the women. So now what attracts the dark angels is also the beauty of the men. I'm gonna have to go. If you listen to the simplicity of God meaning what he said, and, and we're not talking about anything else but what he did and said in the Old Testament. We're not talking about anything in, 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 that, that's not in the Gospels. Because there's th some things in there that you have really twisted up. And you're not the only ones. I had said before, there's the only place where God talks about election is when he calls somebody and he talks to say, make your election sure. So in a place, in, in one of the epistles, when he talks about a certain woman being the lady elect, everybody says she had a lot of children. Of course she did. She was elected and called just like you. But you can't have that. Oh my. Oh no. God don't choose women. I'm a man. You know, when you believe that God would never choose another human being, a woman, you are denying God. You are denying the power of his blood, the power of everything, because she is entitled to everything the same as you. But you don't like that. Oh, you don't like that at all. Because for many, many years, you had it made. You had all the bases covered so a woman could never get in. And even now, you've got so much pride, you would never admit that you don't know half the stuff that you claim. And you'd have to receive it off of an old woman. <laughs> I gotta laugh at that. I'm so glad I'm an old woman. I really am. I am so thankful that he chose this hour in my life to use me. It, it feels so good. Because nobody could twist it up and say, I'm thinking this, I'm doing that, or I'm chasing after their husband. <laughs> nobody can do that. Nobody can look at me and become jealous. <laughs> Nobody could find anything. I feel so much like Jesus. Jesus, there is nothing about his appearance that you would desire or want. And I love that. I love that. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I love what he created. I loved what he did with me. He, <laughs> he could have done a million things, but he chose this. <laughs> so thank you, Lord. Anyway, we'll go on to a more serious subject. If these people would even come to a place where they would go before God and say, you know what, Lord, maybe... You know, just like the disciples, they said, when when the Lord said, one of you will betray me, they all said, and it's in one of the Gospels, they all said, not one, not two, all, is it I, Lord? That's the attitude God wants from you. Is it I, Lord? Did I do that? But you have to receive peace when God tells you you didn't. Some of you won't receive the peace and the rest when God reveals to you, no, you're not doing that. You won't listen. You think as long as you beat on yourself, everything's going to be okay because you, you, that's all you know. So you self-sabotage yourself and you can't find anything. And then eventually, and this is why a lot of ministers won't minister, eventually you'll come to the place where you blame that other person. I couldn't find it because they promised me I could find it and I didn't. 
Well, you see, I promise you nothing. I tell you, get into the Word and find Jesus Christ. And I promise you, you'll have a relationship with God the way I did. If you do what I did. But I don't promise you blessing, curse, whatever. I don't do any of that. All I do is lead you into the Word of God. That's it, because I don't care about anything else. I know that if you get into that Word the way you need to, you're going to be safe. And I know I've been praying for you, for you to be safe. There comes a place where Paul the Apostle says, For you it is safe. He did certain things that he did not need to do, said certain things he did not need to say, but for you it is safe. 